to this Eclipse tutorial series. My name is Michael Traeger, and I created these videos while finishing my master's degree at Duke University. This tutorial series was funded by the Medical Physics Graduate Program at Duke University. These tutorials will be focused on providing an introduction for students in the Duke Medical Physics Graduate Program with respect to a project they will complete during their radiation therapy class, but can be extended as a useful tool for any beginner Eclipse users. As a disclaimer, these videos are not meant for use as guides for clinical applications, including treatment planning on real patients, rather as a good starting point to familiarize new Eclipse users. I'm not affiliated with varying medical systems or with the ARIA software at this time, and am by no means an expert user. In this video series, I will cover the basics of the Eclipse interface, getting started with a treatment plan, contouring strategies, basic 3D planning, IMRT planning, and how to analyze plans. I'll be working with Eclipse version 13.6 and ARIA version 13.6. Alright, let's get started. This is the fifth video of the Eclipse tutorial series, IMRT Planning. In this video, I will discuss how to create a plan with inverse optimization and the optimization interface and functionality. Let's start with the four field box plan that we learned how to create in the last video and convert it into an IMRT plan. We will work with the same anonymized patient as we used in the last video. For an IMRT plan, we still need to define the gantry, couch, and collimator geometry for each beam but the fluence in each beam is optimized by the treatment planning software. IMRT stands for Intensity Modulated Radiation Therapy. The difference between 3D and IMRT is that in a 3D plan, our MLCs are static throughout the duration of each beam, but in IMRT, however, each beam includes a series of MLC positions which modulate the beam's fluence throughout the duration of its delivery. This enables more conformal dose distributions so we can increase the dose to the target while minimizing the dose to the critical structures. The fluence is optimized using a cost function that I'll discuss later in this video. Before we get started with our optimization, there are some important special considerations that are necessary for IMRT. First off, we need to be sure to verify the accuracy of our contours. Accuracy of contours is more important for IMRT because the inverse optimization depends on them directly. This is especially true for the PTV and for any organs at risk that are in close proximity to the PTV. Second, we need to make sure we check the beam geometry, including the gantry angles, couch angles, and collimator rotation, as the inverse optimization does not optimize the beam geometry and instead uses the initial positions provided by the planner, other than the collimator positions, which can be optimized by the system. Lastly, we need to check the beams for the need to fix a jaw position, for instance, in the shoulder region of a head and neck case. The optimization will define the fluence and then set the jaw position to include the entire fluence and PTV. However, there is an option to manually override the jaw position, and you will need to know which beams to use this option for, and set their collimator settings prior to beginning the inverse optimization. We currently have four fields in our plan, without MLCs. Once we optimize, MLCs will be automatically added to the beam in order to modulate the fluence. So to optimize, we go to Planning, and select Optimization, and then Optimize. We are now in the optimization interface, so let's discuss what we see. The most important part of the screen is a list of contours on the left, over here. These are the structures that we will be optimizing fluence for. When we optimize, we will choose between upper and lower constraints to reach our specified dose volume criteria, which can be seen here. So you have your lower and your upper constraints. An upper constraint is used for critical structures and the PTV, and means that we do not want any dose greater than the specified constraint to cover a percent of the structure's volume. A lower constraint is used only for the PTV and means that we want at least some dose value to cover some volume of the target. We can also put a priority on each constraint, which will tell our planning system how heavily to weight the current constraint. The center here is a DVH that allows us to see how well our constraints are being met throughout our optimization process. The rightmost screen shows one plane of the patient and shows the isodose lines as our optimization progresses. Next we have normal tissue objectives. When this is in use, the optimization automatically tries to limit dose to all tissues within the body contour. This is one reason why the body contour is so important. This can be set to work automatically or use manually defined settings. The manual settings can be used to weight the normal tissue penalty as a function of distance from the PTV surface. We have some other settings that can be useful in the settings tab. We can specify a maximum number of iterations or maximum time for optimization algorithm to limit the, the computation time. More importantly is the resolution. We can specify how fine we want our optimization algorithm's fluence grid to be. 
The finer our resolution, the longer optimization time, but the tighter our dose distribution can be. We also have two checkboxes down here. So the automatic optimization mode means that once the optimization is completed, this interface will close and the dose will automatically be calculated. Automatic intermediate dose means that the dose is calculated in the middle of the optimization process, which can give us a more accurate depiction of what an achievable dose distribution will look like mid-optimization. It is important to note at this point what the difference between our optimized fluence map and our final dose distribution is. You may have noticed that I talk about fluence when we are discussing optimization and not dose. This is because our optimization algorithm is optimizing the fluence and not the actual MLC sequence. This is important because once our optimization is complete, we will have an optimized fluence map, which may be slightly different than our actual delivered fluence from the MLC sequence. Once we have our optimal fluence map, we must then calculate an MLC sequence and then calculate the dose as we previously learned. So now that you understand what our optimization algorithm is actually doing, let's add some constraints. Let's start with the PTV. As I mentioned, we will have both upper and lower objectives on the PTV. So let's add one upper and one lower objective now. We would like the PTV to receive at least the prescription dose with a nearly homogeneous dose distribution. The lower constraint helps us achieve the prescription dose and the upper constraint controls the hotspots making for a more homogeneous dose distribution. For a lower objective, we usually want 95% of the target to receive 100% of the prescription dose, which is 54 gray for our plan. Therefore, our dose here will be 54. Let's make the priority for this 100. I try to keep 100 as my maximum priority to simplify things, but the priorities are relative to each other, and hence can therefore be set to your own preference. To keep the dose homogeneous and to avoid excess hotspots, let's make our upper constraint such that 0% receives 105% of the prescription dose, which here is 56.7 gray. We'll use a priority for this of 100 as well. As you can now see, we have arrows on our DVH. These are the constraints that we just added. If our constraints are properly met, our dose will go over the lower constraint up here and then come down under the upper constraint. This gives us a rapid drop fall off and hence giving us a homogeneous dose distribution. We can also manually drag these constraints on the DVH, like so. Let's put them back to what we had before. So let's now add some critical structure constraints. For this video, we will add constraints on only the bladder and the rectum for simplicity. The critical structure constraints are often specified by the physician based on clinical experience. There are also many Quantec reports that specify DVH-based probabilities of complications for many normal tissues. As I mentioned earlier, we will only want upper constraints for the critical structures because we want to always ensure that we are getting less than a specified dose to the critical structures. So now let's add our three constraints to the bladder. So these will be upper constraints. So the first one will want 0% of the bladder to get any more than 75 gray. Our next constraint will want less than 25% of the bladder to get more than 65 gray. The last constraint will be no more than 40% of the bladder can get 40 gray. We'll use a priority of 75 for now on all of these constraints. There often may be an inherent trade-off between limiting dose to critical structures and achieving ideal coverage of the target. These priorities can be weighted to achieve the balance that you desire between them. Let's also add our three constraints to the rectum. So once again, we'll do upper constraints. So here, let's say that we want 0% of the bladder to get more than 75 gray. We want 17% of the bladder, or no more than 17% of the bladder to get 65 gray and less than 40% of the bladder to get over 40 gray. So once again, we'll add priorities of 75 on all of these. Now that we have all of our constraints, let's click on Start IMRT Optimization and begin the optimization process.
The optimization algorithm uses a cost function, which is essentially the summation over all structures of the product of a structure's priority with the difference between the desired criteria and the actual criteria. The algorithm is optimized once this cost function is minimized. This cost function can be seen in this window down here as the optimization proceeds. Also, as we hover over the constraints on our DVH, we will see different sized circles. So these circles correspond to the current cost of that structure. You can also see the current cost of the structure on the right here in a histogram. So once the cost function levels out, the optimization has converged and we will have our optimal fluence map. But let's get, let it go until it finishes itself. We can also drag and drop the constraints to tweak our optimization in real time. But for now, let's just leave them alone. So as you see, our cost function has leveled out for each structure. So let's stop the RMIT optimization. Select OK. So now that we our optimization is done, we must calculate the dose to obtain our actual dose distribution. So let's click on Calculate Dose. We have to select the leaf motion calculator to use, so we'll use the Smart LMC. Select OK. Here it specifies that all of our MLCs will be sliding windows, which is OK. Now that the dose has been calculated, our planning system has matched the physical parameters of the machine to try to get as close to the optimal fluence map as possible. And here we have our optimized dose distribution. Since we have an IMRT plan, when we go to the beam's eye view, we can visualize the modulated leaf positions. So we can click on play, and you'll see how the MLCs progress throughout the duration of the treatment. This is helpful to ensure that the software did not do anything weird when optimizing and that our target is in the MLC openings for the duration of the beam. Let's now normalize our plan. So go to Dose Prescription, Plan Normalization Mode. So let's select that 95% of our target receives 100% of the prescription dose. Alright, and we now have our four-field IMRT plan. Thank you for viewing this video in the Eclipse tutorial series. I hope you now understand inverse optimization and how to create your own IMRT treatment plan. In my next video, I'll teach you how to analyze a treatment plan. Thank you and I'll see you next time.